went into turn three and I heard a bang and like, am I really spinning getting up to speed at Talladega right now? So um, evidently ran something over on the apron getting up to speed. I just looked at a series of photos. Um, coming down the back stretch, it was it was already soft and then uh, let loose going to turn three. So terrible way to start the weekend. Um, fortunately, the car isn't too tore up. Uh, missed the wall, didn't dig the, blip, the split into the grass, and uh, we'll just get some dents knocked out of it and hopefully be good from there. Are you concerned there's more left rear suspension damage though, Jimmy? No, that's why Chad didn't want me driving off. He didn't know how far the tire came apart and didn't want me to tear anything else Issues up. So today. An issue. Caution is out. There's the 33 of Grala, one of our championship contenders, and he's got a big hit in the front. Oh, Cody Coughlin got high. That's the 47 of Chris Fontaine. Fontaine saves his truck and heads to pit road. I don't know who Kaz got into. Maybe hit from behind as he checked up. It looks like he shoved into the outside wall. Yeah, I couldn't tell if he was if he just got Yeah, he just got up the racetrack right there and then tried to come back down and Fontaine was there. Yeah, it looked like um, maybe the 16 of Ryan Truex hit Kaz in the back, knocked him into the wall. For some reason it looked like the 27 of Ben Rhodes lost his momentum there. Probably let off when he saw the contact between the two trucks ahead and just Kaz was in the wrong place at the wrong time. There was nothing he could do there just got hit from behind. Uh, heartbreaker for the 33 of Grala. Right on board with him here. Uh, it's possible, let's see what happens. Down, down. And just we're right. Chain reaction. Chain reaction, yeah. Tired. You just don't want the tire to blow out. Here's how it happened. Oh, Ben Rhodes clips it. Look, was that Rhodes in the 27? I couldn't tell for sure, but he clipped Clay Greenfield in that beautiful Red, white, and blue truck and around Greenfield win, and that collected Nemechek. Boy, Nemechek didn't have anywhere to go. You see him behind the 88. That was indeed Rhodes that tried to go in a hole that Greenfield closed, and it collected those other trucks. Yeah, and he just had such a huge rate of speed as he was coming up on him there. It just caught him right there going into the corner. And we talked about it earlier, being off center. He caught him in the left rear and just immediately turned him. Well, and remember when we talked to him after that second stage and he said, I just want to run a smart race. I just want to keep it clean. And and we, we talked about the fact that you can run smart, but sometimes you're just a victim of somebody else's situation. And that's exactly what happened with John Hunter Nemechek. Yeah, and that's just the case here at, at Talladega and Daytona. You can run all day and have everything go your way and it just takes one mistake by somebody else, wrong spot, wrong time, and this happens. Matt Crafton had a ringside seat for that tussle. They're wrecking behind you, they're wrecking behind you. Very fortunate for the 45 truck of self there. You see him get clipped on that corner, but he was able to keep it going straight. 21 years old from Ohio there, that bright orange 13 had led just three laps before today. It's been a good amount of time out front, but now it's Grant Enfinger, last year's winner in contact, and Coughlin goes around. Big hit for Coughlin and Fontaine and others involved. And there's John Hunter Nemechek. Looks like he has escaped. Now watch Bell. He gives Enfinger a push. They're clear of this. But now here comes Gregson, three wide up the middle. And this has to be where problems started. Yeah. By Snyder, it looked like he got into the back end of the 13 and spun him. Well, what happens is that bottom lane here through the trioval is much flatter than the rest of the lanes going up. And when you're in the middle, you're already in a bad spot because the back end of your truck starts to want to wiggle around. But what you saw there was Myatt Snyder was in the middle, um, and it looked like he came up the racetrack there, and as he went, he got loose right there, and then he just touched the back of the 13 in the right rear, and, and the 47 came down, and, and, and it all broke loose there. You can see... Briefly up in the air was the 13 truck, and he settled right back down. The aerodynamic flaps you see on that bed, Vince, those flaps opening up, that's helping to evacuate the air from under the truck and set it back down. Like they served their purpose. I can see why Fontaine was slow. Wow, that was a heavy hit for him. I just think Snyder tried to get into a hole, got a little bit loose, and clipped Cody Coughlin. Yeah, when you're in the middle like that, you know how it is, Michael. It's just you have to be so much 
more careful with the steering wheel and the input that you put into the right or left because everything just becomes much easier to to spin out or get loose and, and the truck just is not as stable as it is uh, in the outside or inside lanes when the middle is is a tough place to be through that triable almost like if you're trying to if you've ever had to walk on the ice it's kind of tough to get your your balance and, and feel secure well, you see him, he kind of, I don't know if he thought the 13 was going to come back up the racetrack right there, but he kind of jerked the truck to the right, the 51 truck of Mike Snyder, kind of jerked the truck to the right, and then when he went back to the left, when you put that input to, into the wheel to the right and then pull it right back to the left, it instantly makes the truck loose. And watch at the back of the screen, the yet the pink truck that's torn up. That's John Hunter Nemechek. Heavy contact by Wendell Chavis there into the road truck. Watch where Nemechek goes. He's racing to play, make the next round of the playoffs, and he used every bit of the available real estate there down into turn one to clear that. Outside, outside, outside. Yeah, he was just in trouble. Low, clear low, clear you know, low, when, he, low, when he started low, going up the racetrack, and you could see that steering wheel, and it started going back to the right, back to the left, back to the right, he was in trouble right, right from the beginning. by a nose over Infinger as they cross the line in the final lap and contact and a big crash. And John Hunter Nemechek sneaks through. And the aid of John Hunter Nemechek escapes and it's going to be Parker Kligerman for the second time. A winner at Talladega. And there as as he broke out, and it, that just didn't happen. Nine of the last 10 races here at Talladega, the final lead change has happened in the last couple of laps. Happens again today, as you see, the carnage before they could get to the finish on the white. As we see some cars making their way to pit road now. Oh, there you go, there's a, a big rip. And there's a problem, Jimmy McMurray gets hit. Earnhardt gets into it. McMurray's gonna get hit again. We see that so many times at Talladega. Everybody trying to get on pit road at the same time, and they just make contact. You see the the damage and the carnage to the 33. So Here's what happened. Well, you can see, I think Kyle Busch was on the inside of Jamie McMurray. Did not know he was trying to pit. He's in the second lane, way up on the racetrack in the 77. I think has no idea the one is pitting or just can't tell. And he hits him reasonably close to full speed, Jeff. Also the 15, we see Mark Thompson got into that as well. Chris Busher in the 37, also collected in this. But Jeffrey Earnhardt in the 33. Massive contact there with the one. I just think that Jamie McMurray was trying to come to pit road, and he was. But out. that's a bad place on the racetrack to try to commit to pit road. You have to get to your left, Rick, and blend out of track. People are starting to push each other around. Caution! Smoke up into yep. the wall. Looks like Paul Menard potentially in the 27. The 27. All that maneuvering could pay off for those that were able to get up there, but you see him moving way up the track. Yeah, at the start of that replay, there was already sparks coming out of the 27. That tells me he had a tire going down. Metal was on the racetrack, so he goes up. Oh, pretty decent contact with the wall. This is another look at it. You see he goes in and basically straight up the racetrack. Um, the 13 behind him does a nice job not making contact. Oh, pit. and slow down. The 48, there's contact. He got uh, Jim Johnson Johnson got right the rear. Back. He's going to come to pit road, as does the 10. The 18 also on pit road. Hard left turn for Jimmy Johnson. Chaos down there on pit you road. See he comes out the window, so they're going to disagree. But here's what happened with the 48. Yeah, once again, the 48's pitting, but he's in that outside lane and Ty Dillon just does not know he's coming on pit road or can't get slowed down quick enough so that's two times a day we've seen cars in that middle or outside lane trying to get on pit road you see contact with the 10 car as well and I think when the 48 pitted I think when the 48 pitted they didn't know he had damage we've seen Dale Jr. stuck back in the middle of the pack and right here we saw him off turn two try to make a big move on Michael McDowell when he did, he just went way up, made a little bit of contact with the wall right here on the exit. I don't think any major Gets into the back of the car slowing down because the six of Trevor Bain has a tire going down. Yeah, the 41 got alongside. They made contact maybe with the 19, and then they made contact with the six, cut the right side tires down on the six car on the right front. So right here, watch the smoke. I'm 
sorry, the contact's already happened, so the six is slowing down, and Junior just didn't see it. Pretty good contact. Yes. And take a look at this, the tire carrier. So he's going to leave the right side, and the 23's coming in and catches the tire, which, man, that is... You know what's crazy about those guys? Is he was smiling. As they, you know, as they were talking to him, he was smiling. I mean, these, these are unique people. See that tire and wheel bouncing around. Logano and Blaney making up row one. Logano on the outside, the lead car. He was able to get a jump on Ryan Blaney, and now he'll dive to the bottom of the racetrack. He stays in front of Ryan Blaney, and the wreck happens behind him. A.J. Allmendinger in the 47 spins, as does the 43 of Eric Almarola. Contact behind them, Clint Boyer's involved in the 14. Cole Witts in the 72, and we see a very slow rolling Michael McDowell in the 95 going through there as well. Flat tires here, don't tear it up. Rick started in the back. Not enough space for those cars. Michael McDowell trying to make it, make it through the middle. Cole Witt, I just don't think, saw him. Yeah, I think it was as simple as that. Michael McDowell was looking to go three wide up the middle. Try to make some moves. The 72 had the same idea. Hey, I'm going to come down, get to three wide in the middle. They were both changing lanes and both trying to take the lane. You have a lot of room. 13 going to the top two rows behind you. Top three. Hold break here, guys. We're spinning. Hold break. Left rear. All good. You're all clear. Never stop. Just kept on going. <laughs> Johnson, Suarez, Menard, all lined up on the bottom of the track up front. Oh, and we have a hit back here. A hard hit. hit. 23, hard into the wall. So Joey Gase bringing out the caution for the eighth time. And not able to control it. You see that right front tire towed out. Big contact there as Joey Gase was running 29. Black car can't tip make out who that is. Is that, is that Brendan gone? I just can't make it out. It's a 55 car, I'm sorry. 55 of DJ Kennington. I think he got in the right rear quarter panel. And that put Joey Gase hard into the outside wall. And then he was more or less along for the win. Yeah, they got hooked together and just couldn't get, get apart from each other. Both cars running on the lead lap. That's the worst way to get wrecked. Somebody hooks you in the right rear quarter panel and it's just going to turn you right. I think that's a break. Obviously not for Joey Gase, but I think that's a little bit of a break for Keselowski. We hadn't seen him really move into the front, but that's going to bunch everything back up. Cameras, they go down the back stretch. Okay. Hard, hard into the wall, the 41 of Kurt Busch. He'll collect the rest of the field. 18's in it, the 48's in it. The 88 is in it. Just on the front edge, he starts to roll now on the apron. The 32. Oh, just looks like the 78. Was that the 38, perhaps, of David was, Reagan? Yeah, I think it was a 38. It's like a 78 trying to make it four wide. And this is what we talked about all week. Why do the playoff drivers fear Talladega? Because of this. Every one of these drivers, the 18 of Kyle Busch, the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Schuster, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson, you see heavy contact there as well. Four of Kevin Harvick. They have to be in the middle of this pack. They have to fight for the points. That's why those stages are so important. Think about the points that were gained by Keselowski, Blaney, even Johnson. He got 10 points in that in over the stages. That's going to take a little of the sting away away from this accident. Suarez back up there. Big wreck behind him. Legato gets in it. Trevor Bain also involved. Ryan Blaney in the 21. Big hit for him again. And the four of Kevin Harvick also into the side. You see the 21 and the 22 made a little bit of contact and it pushed the 22 of Logano down into the side of the six car. Just with a contact or the air just moved them, but 
Just move the 22 of Logano down inside into the side of the six of Bain. And to add to the frustration of Kevin Harvick, he was really on a lap of his own. You, you don't even see him in the picture because he was behind the pack. These cars just don't stop right away, running almost 200 down, miles per hour. Slow down. Front easy. Get him. Easy. Side. He had a little Two bit of contact. Side. Keep coming low, 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 and keep coming up. You're good. You're good. You made it through. Back it down. Back it down. You're good. I think he just barely touched him. But this is it. All fighting. A huge opportunity for some drivers out here. Suarez is going to go around. He got tagged from the back. Right in front. Hard contact. Hold it up there. Hold it up there. Yellow up. Be ready, guys. Make it three wide. And the 42 came up a little bit. The 19 came down a little bit. Another big red. Say, hey, it's a good points day. Don't try to take that hole. But that's not how race car drivers are wired. When they see that gap open up, Jeff, that is green light. That is going for the win at Talladega. And again, it's not that the 42 or the 19 may have turned their wheels, but when you have that many cars and they're that close, the air moves you around. It's not like the cars just go perfectly straight. I mean, it, it's... Chip Ganassi responding. Side by side as they exit four. The tricky triangle there. 